Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. This is a solenoid engine. This is probably one of the worst performing electric motors you can build. But let's admit, these are extremely cool. They basically function like miniature gasoline engines, you know, with the timing, the firing of the piston, or the solenoid in this case, to stroke the motor and make it run. If I can stop turning it on and off. I've seen plenty of these things on YouTube. V6s, V8s, crazy single cylinder ones like this, all sorts of fancy little motors, but I've never seen people put them in something to do work because I want to see if these engines are useful for making any sort of work or moving anything, flying anything, or boating anything. We'll probably work on the flying thing later. I'm going to build this engine and put it in a boat. Well, maybe not this engine. We did start with this single cylinder first, which I will share the files for so you can create one at home because I've never built any sort of engine type contraption and this is the first for me. So for the single cylinder engine, I kind of just made this as easy as possible. It's definitely not the most efficient, it's not the best, but I designed it to be mainly 3D printed with very, very few parts you'll need to purchase. Mainly if you decide to make this, you'll need some M3 screws, a skateboard bearing, and obviously the solenoid, which you can buy on eBay or Amazon. So it runs and shakes, but it's not very powerful. The reason why is because this only works during the inner stroke, this inner stroke, I guess you could call it that. I don't really know the terminology of my gas motors, and this is definitely not a gas motor. This cam clicks on the switch, which energizes the solenoid, which these coils here, it's basically an electromagnet, and then it pulls this piston or plunger, but it only does that during the inner stroke, so you only get like half of what you can technically be doing. The way we get around this is by simply adding more cylinders, which is why we we're going to be building an I-4. I'm still in the process of building this I-4, so we're gonna finish this thing. I get to turn it on. Kind of really funny because I'm so excited about a horribly inefficient engine that has no practical application whatsoever in any sort of use. It's just purely stupid and mechanical and cool. So what we got going on here is we have this inline four. I basically have the cylinders firing with two up, two down. So we only have one switch touching this cam. The, the operation of the cam is to click on the switch and click off the switch. Not turn off the switch, click off the switch. Because when the switch is in the off state, it actually energizes two of these solenoids, causing the engine to fire using only one switch. All right, there's only one way to find out. Let's turn it on. Nothing yet, let's add a little more power. <gasps> it runs! It runs, it actually runs! <laughs> That's so cool! Oh, it actually works. Look at the little sparks on the switch. You see that? Oh, this is so cool, it sounds awesome. Turn off the RPMs. And let's turn it off. All right, let me see how warm everything is. So the noise, they actually get kind of hot kind of fast. Man, this is so cool. It actually far up first run. I didn't need just the timing or anything. So as you can see, once you reach top and when this when this plunger's all the way in, the relay turn, or this, this switch turns into the off position, which closes one side of the contacts. So now this one is at the lowest part of the stroke which pulls it in because it's electromagnet. And by the time it gets to the top, the switch is clicked again. And then this one is being pulled up and vice versa. And that just happens really, really fast over and over and over and over and over and over and over, thus making the engine work. Oh, it has like no torque. I mean, it'll probably, this will, this will make a little boat go, like a little steamboat, which we're we'll building next.
check it out. It is done. It is ready for the water. It's probably gonna be terrible because I really don't feel a whole lot of torque here. Check this out. It sounds so cool though. All right, let's go get to the lake. So it's another beautiful day out here in uh, overcast, gray, rainy Ohio. I have to get this video done, so we're gonna test the boat today. I hate this, it's cold, it's wet, it's awful. This is Ohio. <laughs> Actually, it didn't quite go that well. I'm not sure if cold weather affects anything, but this is the first time it's been outside of the shop and the solenoids are so weak. Let's go back in the water. Oh, come on. I need warmer weather. I definitely want to get another camera angle here, but quick shout out to Inst360 for sending me these cool little cameras. It's very small and it works well. A GoPro would not work well in this boat. Change of plans, the other battery wasn't working. So now I have two three cells, so we have 22.2 volts going straight to these 12 volt solenoid. Oh, it runs way faster. Oh, <laughs> I plugged into the RC thing and killed it. So we're definitely not RC. Now what I accidentally did was plug this 22.2 volt thing into this electronic speedo controller, which is only rated for 11.1 .1 volts. So I just fried it. Ah, today's not a good day. So the boat doesn't work that well in cold weather. Not looking so hot for the solenoids, although they are technically very hot if you touch them. So I basically made this elaborate testing rig inside my workshop because it's climate controlled and it's much warmer here because this boat is like my hands in the cold. It doesn't function very well or at all. My joints stop working at this old age of 30. So we set this thing up in the shop and of course it ran much better because it's nice and climate controlled in here. Basically it across 18 feet. It did that in 32 seconds, which is about 0.38 miles per hour. Now I did put it on the 22.2 volt battery that I jerry rigged and made at the pond because I wanted to see how actually fast it went. And that crossed the course in 13 seconds, which netted me a speed of 0.944 miles per hour. 13 seconds. Almost one. It probably would actually be one if we didn't count the acceleration time. One mile per hour with the solenoid engine. This is awful. So this engine, definitely not efficient, not very strong, and most importantly, it's not very reliable or safe. But you know what is safe? Simply Safe, our sponsor for this video. Simply Safe is a fast and easy way to secure your home. Instead of dealing with traditional security systems such as having to call, schedule things, and have someone come out and set it out, Simply Safe makes it way easy. All you do is you go to their website, you can check out their pre built packages, or you can set up your own to suit your custom needs. The great thing about Simply Safe is they have a huge array of sensors you can choose from. They have glass brick sensors, motion sensing, door entry, and they even have sensors such as carbon monoxide. So if you have your pets at home and you have a gas leak from your furnace, your pets will get a chance to live because you'll get a notification that your house is filling with poisonous gas. With Simply Safe, your home is professionally monitored. 24 seven. The neat thing is I've actually had to test this before because I left the dogs in the workshop. The motion sensor picked up the dogs jumping at the door because they heard a noise outside. I got a professional phone call from Silly Safe asking if everything's all right. I check it out with my video camera. The dogs are moving. They let me know it was great. Chances are you probably already heard of Simply Safe. With over 3 million units in households around the US, they've been around the block for a while. They're even trusted and awarded by experts, including US News and World, PC Mag, and Popular Science. The nice thing about Simply Safe is that the name Simply is definitely right with the installation. Most of these items you're just gonna peel and stick around your house. And that's it. You're done. Very simple. 
two of the sensors that I'm most excited about are the temperature sensor and the water sensor because the water sensor will let me know if like my pipes break in the winter and my house starts to flood so I can be notified immediately on my phone. So what are you waiting for? Get Simply Safer today and save 40% off or more with your Simply Safe security system during their holiday sale. Visit simplysafe.com slash petersheeple to learn more. So what did we learn today? Solenoid engines? are very terrible engines. There's a reason why nobody ever does anything cool with them. They're just little desk trinkets that you see people make and display and make plenty of these YouTube videos about, but unfortunately they're just not very good at doing work. I have ultimate aspirations of making a flying solenoid airplane, which is going to be a serious challenge, but that's a problem for future me in another video. Yeah, that's it. You so just go ahead and leave. Go boat, go! Look at it go! So it takes 22.2 volts to get anything useful out of it, and even then it's abysmally slow. Alright, let's see how it measures up. <laughs> oh god, it feels like it's slowing down. I should grab it before it stops working completely. I think I see the solenoid noise discoloring. I can't tell if it's hot because my fingers don't work. Maybe the switch burn out. <laughs> well, the solenoids aren't too warm. 